Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkovic. Today we are going to talk about some of the stuff you need if you're a traditional bow hunter. Some of the there's a few tools you're going to want to have, um, and some of them you may need, some of them you don't need. But we're going to kind of go through, starting with some of the essentials that you have to have, working up to some of the stuff you're going to want to have to, to you're going to want to have to use. Um, First off, as far as the traditional bow itself, which I have my long bow right here uh, to show for some reference, but there are a few things if you're going to shoot a traditional bow you're going to need, or any bow for that matter. One of them is going to be a square. You're going to use this square to set your knock point, and I also use mine to check my brace height. So on my bow, which we have right here, if I want to check my brace height, I can take this and put it right on there, and I can see it's got millimeters and it's got inches on one side. They come in different forms. I like this solid one myself the best, rather than the plastic ones that you screw an arrow shaft on. There's different variations, but this simple one, kind of the one I like the best. But I'll put it right on there, and I can see that on this right now, I'm running right at six and three quarters, almost six and seven eighths of a of an inch brace height on there. And for my knock point height, I can put this right on there. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on here, but I have an actual a, uh, um, a mark on this. I'll try and show you here in a minute. But you put that right on the string, rest that right on the arrow shelf, and you can see where your knock height is on there. Now on mine, I actually have a, a white mark. I don't know if you'll see that, but I got a mark that I scratched in there. That's where I run my knocks at. My knock is right below that. That mark on there is right at the very top of my knock point. So, um, But this is real handy, real comfortable. You're going to need one so that you can check brace height, check your knock height, um, things like that. comes in... It, it's, it's kind of a mandatory tool. They're not expensive. I will have links for all this stuff down below that we're going to cover on here, but this is something that you're going to want to definitely have to have. Um, another thing, if you're not tying your knocks on and you're using a brass knock like I do, which is that knock point right there, how that's made out of brass, you're going to want to have a pair of knock pliers. This allows you to not only put the knocks on and squeeze them and set them, but you can also use the teeth in there to open a knock up and reposition it and reset it. But a pair of knock pliers are going to be something that's pretty mandatory for you as well. Um, and uh, if you're going to be doing your uh, tips and stuff like that and mounting broadheads and glue on broadheads on inserts or putting inserts in, you're going to need some glues. Uh, for my inserts, to glue my inserts in the shaft, I use Gorilla Glue, this blue right here. It's impact resistant. Been using it since it came out probably, I don't know, eight, nine, ten years ago, and it's always worked great for me. It's been fantastic. Are there other options? Yes, this is the one I always use uh, for uh, mounting my heads. My heads on my arrows are basically, and I've got videos on that, but they are a construction of a broadhead mounted on, I don't know if I can, oh, I can loosen it up. It is a broadhead mounted on a steel adapter that I have in there. I'm trying to get really focus on there, but that is a steel adapter inside of there. And then, so to glue that steel adapter inside that broadhead, um, I need glue for that. I use hot melt still. I've been using hot melt for 25 years. Uh, I love it, works great, and that's just your standard hot melt sticks like this. I don't need a gun, you don't need anything for it. All you need is a torch. You heat up your insert on there, you heat the glue up a little bit, rub it right on there. These little glue sticks uh, are what I use to mount my, my inserts into my actual broadhead to build that whole front end. Uh, the brass inserts that go into the shaft, those are what I use um, the Gorilla Glue for right here. And then to put my feathers on, I use, I have for ever since, I remember when Fletch Tight used to be the original in the white, I was using it then. They came out with the Platinum probably 10, 15 years ago. I've been using the Platinum ever since. Um, I, I really like it. It works great. My feathers never come off and they never give me a fit. So uh, you're going to need some kind of glue or Fletch Tape or something like that on there that you're going to want to have. You're going to need a torch. Uh, to heat up your inserts, to take them off, to pull things apart, to readjust things, to mount your heads on there. Uh, for a lot of that, the broadhead work is traditional bow hunters. Again, where we're running uh, heads on inserts, on these steel adapter inserts, that kind of stuff. Um, we're going to want to have, you're, you're gonna, a torch comes in real handy. Or even for taking your inserts out. Uh, even for taking your cap wraps off your old ones. I use a torch for that. I've done videos on it. It shows you how to do it very safely, cleanly, and not overheating anything. But a simple torch head, uh, propane torch head, they're not expensive. But if you don't have one, you're going to need one. Again, I'll have some links below for you for some simple stuff. Um, that's going to work good for you. Uh, now, if you want to crest your arrows, you can buy cresting machines out there. They got a lot of them. They work really good. Me personally, I every arrow that you see here that's crested, everything that I ever crest arrow-wise, 
uh, which those red rings are what we would call your cresting, okay? Um, for the cresting, I just use a simple aero spinner. This is designed to check if your uh, broadhead is straight. I never use them for that, but you could. Um, but what I do is I take this and I'll set that arrow right on there like this. I'm done knocking everything over, but I'll set that arrow on there so it's there. And then I use a simple Sharpie marker. Been doing this for 20 something years. Uh, I started with testers model paints, went into the bonding uh, or boning uh, cresting paints. I uh, went through all that kind of stuff. You know what? I'm only putting a little bit on there. As you can see, I don't get real elaborate with it. Just very simple, basic. Uh, a couple of stripes on there, whether they're black, red, whatever I do. All I do with it is I use a Sharpie marker. I take the Sharpie, I hold it right here, and I spin it in my hand just like that. Put it over here, spin it in my hand, rub it right on there like that, and that's how I'm cresting them. So you can get as serious as you want to, or um, you can go with something as simple and as easy as that. Um, as far as testing, if that arrow is straight, I don't ever put that on there. They say that you can put it on there, line it up to something, roll it, and see if it is. I, I don't do that. Instead, I just take it and spin it like that on something hard. If it spins true and I'm not getting any wobble, I'm a happy guy. So you do whatever you want that way, but if you want a cheap, simple way uh, to be able to put some crest rings on there, hard to beat a Sharpie marker and a simple spin, you know, a spin tester of any kind. I don't even know if they still make this particular one. Like I said, we're talking over 20 years old, but um, I will have links down below for you for one. It will do the same exact thing if that one's not available. And then, uh, so those are your basic, those are ones that are going to be mandatory. Next ones I would say are going to be a grain scale. Um, I got a couple different variations here. This is one I've had for a long, long time. Simple, slide out, turns on, turns off, real simple. Lay your, your arrow shaft, your point components, anything you want on there. It works very good. I had it for many years. So many years that I thought I finally, I'm like, you know what, I want to buy another one just to have another one. And to test that one just to see because it was so many years old. I bought this one. I just recently bought this one. I bought it from Three Rivers. Uh, great scale, great everything. It does piss me off in the fact that, you know, um, I, I'm putting links to a lot of this stuff on here. Some of this stuff will be on Amazon. Some of the things will not be on Amazon. Some of it will be from Three Rivers. Uh, if you're not Amazon Prime already and you're not using Amazon Prime, you need to. It's worth it. And even the little stuff, um, like the, for example, this scale, I paid over 21, I paid like $21 for this scale. This, this exact scale from Three Rivers, it just came a few days ago, but I bought this scale for $21. I just happened to be on Amazon looking, the same exact scale is on Amazon for like 10 bucks. It's exactly the same. It's the same thing. So, um, so I'm not putting a link to this on Three Rivers. They can, you know, I'm sorry, that price is ridiculous, even though I paid it, um, and I didn't know any better. But I will put a link to the same exact one on Amazon for you, and, and most of that stuff you're going to find. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Three Rivers, I love Custom King, I love a lot of these places. I spend thousands of dollars a year at all of them, I, you know, so I'm, I'm buying a lot of stuff there. But Amazon is usually a much better deal on a lot of things. It just blows my mind the price differences that you can find on there. Um, like uh, like my Jojen jigs, for example, here too. If you're gonna fletch arrows, you're gonna want a jig of some kind. These Jojen jigs that I use, these things, you can tell they're pretty beat up. This one here is 25 years old. I've been using that jig for 25 years. And the same with uh, then this one back here, I bought about uh, probably 10, 12 years ago. You can see I've even modified, put a couple extra little clips on there for some weight. Um, they're not a bad one. I would recommend for somebody, if they were looking for a jig, I would recommend a Bits and Burger because they are the best. Um, they are more money. These are getting harder to find. I don't know if they produce them quite as much anymore. Um, and I noticed the quality of this one is not as good as the quality of one from 25 years ago. Uh, hence the double clamps on that one. This one's still only needing a single. Not that they're bad. That's what I use and love it. But I do believe that that Bits and Burger is a better one. The price of the Bits and Burger jig on Three Rivers? Quite a bit more money than the price of it on Amazon. Plus, on Amazon, you get free shipping. Shipping through Three Rivers is usually pretty ridiculous. I mean, I just spent $200 with them for some string stuff. And it's just some of the prices out there on stuff is crazy. When I give you a link to Amazon, I do it for a reason. Because it's actually a better deal and it's a good price. Um, but um, So I will put a link to the Bits and Burger Jigs on Amazon. Where they're actually like 25 or 30 bucks cheaper 
for a jig than it is to um, buy it on like Three Rivers, for example. Again, support Three Rivers. I love Three Rivers. I buy a lot of stuff there, but honestly, there's a lot of things that Three Rivers and these other archery only places um, sell that you can't buy other places like Amazon. But the stuff I can find on Amazon, I'm buying it there. Um, especially after this. Like I said, that pissed me off. I'm not going to lie. I didn't even think to look on there. I was already putting in an order for stuff on Amazon and I saw that and I said, hey, you know what? I need another grain scale. 20 bucks or 21 bucks. You know what? It's time. I'll grab one. I grabbed it and I happened to look on Amazon and saw the exact same one for, like I said, just a hair over $10. It's like, and free shipping. Everything from Amazon, 100% free. If I want to buy just a stick of glue from Amazon, if I'm Amazon Prime, it's free shipping. I don't pay for nothing, and it shows up two days later. So just something to consider. Um, but a jig is going to be important if you want to flex your own arrows. You don't have to, but if you want to flex your own arrows, you're going to want some kind of a jig. Uh, right, left, wing, heel, close, all things for another, another time. Um, I did an arrow making video before, too, that maybe I'll attach at the end of this for you. But with your jig... Um, the Bits and Burger one is probably what I would highly recommend if you're going to start making your own arrows. Feathers, you can buy them die cut, 3 inch, 2 inch, or you can get them in 3 inch, 4 inch, you can get them in 5 inch, 5 and a half inch high back. I prefer to buy mine as full length. Reason for that is because I actually get a lot more extension out of these. Um, these here, these feathers that you see on here, these are a 4 inch high back. I change my cutter to make them so that they're very high back. Um, but a, a 4 inch feather if you look at the length of this feather versus the length of the feathers in here I can usually get two good feathers and still have a good thick base where the base doesn't come out this super thin where it's worthless and won't glue on I can get two feathers two four the, these feathers out of one of these full length so and it's the same price almost to buy full length as it is to buy a pack of 105 inch or 4 inch or something like that so full length in my opinion is the way to go um, I use a chopper for them this is a chopper three rivers notice three rivers chopper again support them I'm not knocking them but like I said sometimes their prices get astronomical um, but this chopper right here this is my four inch chopper you can see I got it dropped down real low for the guard so that it gets that shape and I get a good height in the back out of it for where I want I actually took that off and modified it so that I could get it a little bit lower and make it work um, but Choppers are great. A young feather burner is fantastic because it's a little more expensive, but that's a ribbon burner where you take your ribbon, young feather burner, you take your ribbon and you set it to the profile of your feather, mount it on there, you put your feathers on there as you cut these to the length you want, mount them on there full size, put it on it, and as you spin, it burns the shape right into the feather. Nice, clean, and simple. They work fantastic. Probably the most accurate way to put a feather on an arrow if you wanted each feather to be exact height and exact shape and everything perfect you probably can't beat a young feather burner it's probably the best system out there um, again not very cheap i'll have links to it below i don't know if they sell that on amazon but if they don't i know three rivers does so i will find a link for you as i actually put all that stuff together later on in this video um, but if you don't want to go that route choppers are cheaper um, and uh, but they do require a little bit more work because you have to chop every feather you're going to take your full length feather set it in there take a rubber mallet wham hit it the feather pops out and then you slide it down hit it again and you're going to chop and go through that so it's a lot more work to make them um, I don't mind it is a young feather burner something I might invest in someday? I say every year I'm going to buy a feather burner. I'm going to buy a feather burner. Um, I have never done it. I mean, I've been saying that for 20 years, back when you could get one for like $79. Now I think they're a little closer to 200 in price, but something to consider and not a bad idea. Um, but feather-wise, you can buy them die cut or chop your own, whatever you want to do. Uh, you have the option for it. Um, now with your shafts or with your arrows, the grain scales are great. Like I said, these are important so that you can weigh what your arrow is. Uh, it also comes in real handy, a grain scale. If you've made up different head designs, broad heads or field tips, and you built them with your uh, stainless steel inserts, you don't know if it's a, if you put 100 grain in that one or 75 in there, or if this is the 150 version of this head or if it's the 135. Having a grain scale is nice because you can just drop it right on there and check it, and now you know what components are made up in that arrow. So grain scales and then also checking for your total arrow weight, they come in very handy. Highly recommend them. You should definitely have a grain scale. For your arrows, another tool um, that you may or may not need, but I think is a, is a, is a major asset. Um, I don't shoot wood arrows anymore. 
So if you're going to go with wood arrows, you're going to need a knock end and a broadhead, a point end taper tool, and probably you're going to want some kind of cutoff saw um, on there. Uh, like I think the wood chuck was a tool I used to use. Again, it's been 20 years since I shot wood arrows, but for the first uh, five, six, seven years of my traditional career, I shot cedar, um, cedar, uh, birch, fir. Um, I shot a bunch of different kinds of maples. I shot a lot of wood arrows. With that, I had a wood chuck taper tool, which would let me taper both ends and cut the ends off and do everything I wanted to. It was a great tool. Um, I'll take a look and see if I remember to. I'll try and look and see if I can find it, if it's still out there, what's used today by guys for wood. Uh, but for aluminum arrows, simple cutoff tool, just like that little pipe cutter, works like a champ. That'll make your take shorten your aluminum arrows up all you want. With carbon arrows, if you are shooting carbon arrows, you need to have a carbon uh, arrow cutoff saw. Yes, there are people out there making them their own, but it is crucial with carbon that you have that cut be perfectly clean right here at the insert. That cut right here has to be perfect. If that is on an angle, when you put that insert in, if there's a gap in there and that thing's on an angle because you didn't cut it right, that shaft can explode and splinter and come apart on you when you're, you're using it. So you want to make sure with carbons that you get that nice, straight, clean cut, which leads us to a arrow saw like you see right here. I will have a link again down to one of these below. They are not ridiculously expensive. Um, they work fantastic. They work for all arrows. All you do is basically you got a cut off blade on that end. You set your knock in there where you want it, put it in there like that, and then you turn it on and you spin it as you go and it just cuts the end of the shaft off. Very simple, very functional. Uh, you can slide this for whatever length you want to have your arrows at. Um, makes it real easy. But these are some of the things that you, you know, again, if you don't want an arrow saw, you don't have to buy one. But that means that when you're bare shaft testing and you got to cut a 16th or an eighth or a quarter inch off of your shaft so that you're tuning them, if you're flying weak and you want to shorten it up a little bit and shorten it up till you get it flying right, you're going to have to make trips back and forth to the pro shop to have them cut that arrow for you. Uh, and then when you buy a new dozen arrows, you can have them cut it that length. A lot of places you buy your shafts from, I don't know of any place that you buy can buy shafts from or where I, I bought my arrow shafts from that won't uh, cut them from the, you know, they'll cut them for you at the length you want. And you want to measure from the inside of the throat of the knock to the end of the arrow, they'll do the cut there. Um, and they'll tell you that. But for your, while well, you're tuning, um, having, you know, it, it can be a pain in the butt to run back and forth to the pro shop to have them cut a little more off each time. That's one of the reasons I have my own arrow saw. These are not ridiculously expensive. Um, they're not super cheap. I, I, I don't even remember. They're somewhere between 100 and 150 bucks, I think. But it is a very valuable tool, um, especially because now you can cut your own, you can do them, you can tune them, you can experiment, you can play. It's just a great feature to have. So this kind of breaks it down. It shows you some of the tools that you can have. And it can go way beyond this. If you start getting into making your own bow strings, you're going to need uh, string making material, you're going to need string jigs, you're going to need string serving tools. Um, I mean, it, it, the list goes on and on. But as you're starting to get into traditional bow hunting, you are going to need a couple of simple components components as you get started then you may want to expand into some other options again they got full-blown cresting tools if you want to get real fancy if you want to just do like I do and put a little bit on it a spinner arrow spinner and a sharpie marker fantastic jigs if you want to make your own uh, fletch your own arrows the glue is that you're going to need to do it torch is a mandatory thing you, this is absolutely mandatory um, if you're going to be working on, on any kind of arrow stuff or building your own arrows or doing anything uh, and then the choppers, feathers, I mean, I will put links down here for you so you can find where this stuff is, but these are some of the things that you're pretty much going to have to have to invest in and get involved in to whatever level you take it at your pace. Don't rush into it. Don't let it overwhelm you. Um, but as you go, these are some of the things that you're going to kind of have to strive for. But if you just got a bow, I would at the bare minimum consider these two tools mandatory. You have to have these um, because they're going to help you set up everything like you want and get you out there in a the range shooting. And uh, you get into arrows, a jig is mandatory. Like I said, there's options here for everything. And uh, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you soon. Bye.